with Nazreen Mahamadi. She's an actress, voiceover artist, and also a human rights activist. How are you doing today? Good, thank you. Good morning, Maurice. Hey, and good morning. Happy Easter. happy Easter to you too. Thank you. Thank you so much for appearing on our show. And uh, one of the things I wanted to let everybody know is that you are a working actress and you also are an author. One of the books that you authored was co-written by your late brother, and uh, Mr. Akbar has certainly left his mark on the on the conscience of mankind with his humanitarian efforts. And the book is called Ideas and Lasses. And unfortunately, he never got to finish the book, but you yourself took it over, and you have continued the human rights activist uh, movement. And I just want to talk to you about that. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and then also your brother and what, what led to his uh, execution by the Iranian government? Sure. It's a painful, but I should speak out for freedom, for his part, and other people like Nelson Mandela, Martin Gandhi, and Martin Luther King. I'm just there, all my role model and my late brother's uh, role model and then we should continue their path. Yes, uh, I try to be voice of all prisoners in Iran, one of the people you know, in outside of country, uh, voice of my late brother and many people like my late brother who are victim of Islamic government of Iran. I mean, there are million, million of people like my brother were killed or still regime every day killing them. They are very innocent. They just wanted secularism. They want just freedom, freedom of speech and secular government, separation between state and church, state of religion. But the regime doesn't have a mercy to these people and killing them every day. I just ran and escaped and Iran. I came to here to be voice of those innocent people in Iran. I try to be a stronger person. If I have experience, I try to have a get more knowledge. And I try to continue my education. I'm a doctor student and a co-writer, other of my late brother's book. He was killed brutally by Islamic government of Iran in dungeon of every prison in Iran. He was just a student, freedom fighter. And regime arrested him, took him to jail, and seven years kept him in the prison, Irving prison in Iran, and tortured him very badly. And finally, after seven years under torture, Islamic government of Iran to kill him in dungeon of Evin prison. It's very painful for me, for my parents, still it's painful, but I hope, I hope one day we find freedom, not only in Iran, the whole world. Today, if I'm speaking about my late brother, I'm not just speaking about him, about million, million of people, million of young people, women, Islamic government killed them. The women regime tortured them, raped them, burned their body. And then 
I'm speaking. I try to be voice of all of these people. I hope we can find freedom in the whole country. I'm trying to continue my late brother's path who believes freedom and secularism. And it was very painful to talk about him, his story, but and a lot of pain in my heart, but I'm proud of him. He was a man of peace. He was a real, a real guy who fought with the Islamic government of Iran. He never was afraid. And he loved American people. And I want to say, he loved American people and he loved the people from Israel. And this is, I want to say, Iranian people love American people. Iranian people love the people from Israel. That is Islamic government. They hate American people. They hate United States. They hate Israel. The Iranian people are very open-minded. They are friends of the United States. They are friends of Israel. We are deeply moved by everything that you've been through, and we are greatly proud also of your brother. Thank you. Could you tell me, uh, where were you when you first realized that he was a captive of the Iranian government? I was the first time I was in Iran, and when he was arrested, and after one year, I think, my parents and told me, Asim, just leave the country. I ran, I escaped the country. When uh, I came first to Germany, and then I came to United States. When I went to Germany, I have some document from Amnesty International. They, some people try to kill me, and with medicine. I have those documents, and I don't want to talk about that that much. And I just came to United States, and after less than two years, I understood. When I was came to United States, I just sorry I forgot to mention about this one. I came to. I went to Turkey, Ankara, because my parents came to over there to visit me. Because I'm a citizen in here, United States. But if I go to Iran, the regime is going to kill me, rape me, and kill me, like other women. And I didn't have choice to see, visit my parents in just in second country in Turkey, Ankara. I flew to Ankara. I went over there, and with my whole family. My sister, brother, uncles, uh, my parents, everybody were over there. I was very happy to spend time with my family, but after three days, I, a student from Iran called my dad's cell phone and said, your son, Akbar, is going to be free from jail. We were so happy, excited. We got party, we danced, we were so excited. My brother is going to be free of jail. And then he was sick because of torture. The regime gave him a lot of torture. I was so happy. My parents were so happy. Finally, my brother is get some medicine, some cure by doctors. And then the fourth day at 7.30 or 8 a.m. morning, we were having breakfast. I was having breakfast, my parents, my dad's cell phone rang. When my dad answered my, the phone, and the same young guy from Iran, his name is, was, is Behnam. And my dad said, Behnam, is you? He said, yes, give the phone to Mr. Wale, who's my uncle. And my dad said, okay. Before he passed the phone to my uncle, when my uncle was talking by phone, he just suddenly left the living room and 
I understood something is going on. I thought my Blake brother is very sick in the jail. And then I just followed my uncle and he went to one of bedroom, that apartment in Ankara, and closed the door. I just came to my uncle. He was talking to me, you know, and he was, his hand was shivering, shaking, and his body was shaking. And he said, Benam, are you sure? Are you sure? I just grabbed the cell phone from my uncle's hand. And I just said, Benam, this is Nasri. Tell me the truth. I am a very strong woman. Let's talk about, let's start with your brother. Yes. Um, he, he kept a diary of his imprisonment before he was tortured and, and yes. murdered. Why was he imprisoned, tortured, and murdered? We knew there is no human rights in Iran. It was a huge demonstration, demonstration rally in Iran 1999. Students were on the street, more than 100,000 students were over there, and many people joined to them. In that day, uh, the regime arrested my two brothers, Manucher and Akbar, and uh, they kept them, and we didn't know more than four months, and the regime tortured them a lot. And after seven years, my brother went to jail. Under torture, regime killed him because he believed uh, human rights, he believed democracy, and he believed secular government. And the regime was afraid of him, and they called him as a brave student, freedom fighter. And that reason, regime, Islamic regime of Iran killed him under torture. Don't worry. I can bear it. And he told me, Akbar was killed. I, I, I couldn't believe it. I, I, I was waiting. He said, he's sick. I just shut down. My body was shaking very badly. I said, no, no, no. And then my mom, dad, when they, this, when they saw my scream, let me, they came to me, tried, they tried, just hug me to stop my body to shake. And told me, don't worry, they killed our son, the regime killed our son. I just told them, yes, yes. And they said, my mom said, why? Why are you crying, Nasri? He's a very strong guy. Did she kill him today? My mom told me, today I am Akbar. If the regime killed my son, I am Akbar. I, I am continuing his path. I will fight with the Islamic government of Iran. If they kill my son, there will be million, million of Akbar who will continue his path. That day was a nightmare for me. It's very difficult. It's very difficult to describe it. And now, after many years, it's still hurting me, but I try to continue. I try to fight with the Islamic government of Iran. I try to help any people, not Iranian people, as a human rights activist, any people in the whole world, if they need my help as a human rights activist, help them to be their voice, to support them. That reason, I try to continue my education too. I'm proud of my late brother. I'm proud of my parents. And I'm proud of, so proud of my mom. Now, even they, my parents, should be US citizen. More than four years, Islamic government of Iran abandoned them to leave country. They are like a home arrest as a hostage in Iran more than four years. Nobody could help them. Nobody could give their voice to support them. 
to be free. They can, they can join us, the two United States, and be with them. My mom is very sick. She got a stroke two years ago because of high stress. And then three neurologists in Iran, they said because she had extremely stressed, high stress, that caused her stroke. She was almost dead. God saved her life. Now she can speak. She can barely talk, walk. I hope the people can hear me today. Be at least be my parents' voice to support them. the Islamic government of Iran. Torture them emotionally and physically. My parents went to jail, to prison of Iran. My brother, sister, whole family are victim. Even in the United States. This is my home. This is my land. Even one day, if Iran be free and Islamic government of Iran be overthrown or, or be changed, but I believe United States is my land. I love this people. I love this country. But I will be happy just one day Iran be free. But I never go back to Iran to live. This is my country. I ran and escaped in Iran because that wasn't home. They didn't give me safety in Iran. I didn't have home in Iran. But in United States, they gave me home. I am safe, at least I am safe in here. This government, this country, I think I belong to this country. Well, it sounds like your brother, your oldest brother, uh, kind of did some really, really incredible uh, problem solving with uh, ex-President Bush. Could you tell us about that and how he uh, sure. helped your family get out and, you know, sounds like he saved your lives as well, right? Sure. President George Bush time, in that time, the end of his presentation, my late brother was killed. After that, we were, I was in the United States. I was very confused, shocked, of, of, because I lost my late brother. And then my uncle was here. I asked him, I said, I don't know what should I do. I'm afraid Islamic government of Iran killed my other brother, Meducha. And he was my late brother's Akbar's cellmate, and I told him, I'm very worried. And he said, don't worry. We should contact with some important people, and then we are not, we, we are going to help manage Don't worry, Nasri. And then I just, he gave me some number. I called the Democrat people from Washington, D.C. And then the Prince Reza Pahlavi, we called him, and then he helped a lot to my family. He, Prince Reza Pahlavi, and King, Queen of Iran, Shafanu. They contact with very important people from White House, they contact very important people in the State Department. And I just went to Washington, D.C. I lived over there for four months. We just ran, helped to my, late, uh, my other brother to run from Iran to Iraq by help of help of uh, Democrat Party, Iranian Democrat Party. And then my uncle joined to, he flew from California to Iraq to help my other brother, Manucha, and then with big help, big support of United States, my brother Manucha just fly, flew with 
army, United uh, States army, and they helped him, they supported him, they kept him in the camp, and they gave him a peace, gave him safety, and then they helped him to fly with from Iraq to Washington, D.C. And I, today, I say thank you to all of them. Thank you to United States. Thank you to President George Bush. And thanks to all important people from White House, State Department, because two important people from the State Department, they gave me their cell phone even. They told me, Nasreen, just let us, you know, every time you have a news from your brother manager. And thanks to Prince Reza Pahlavi and thanks to Queen of Iran, Shahuni. All of these people help my family a lot. And today, my brother manager is here because of help out of them. Help up from my uncle and Democrat Party, all of these people. And thank you, United States. They gave all of us a safe home. Fantastic. People can look at how that transpired, yes, Nasri? about several years ago. It's going to be several years ago. And the Fox News, CNN, uh, when my brother, manager, President George Bush, invited him. And when President George Bush had a speech, and my brother had a speech, very short speech, five minutes. And he mentioned about my late brother, about my brother, Manucher, and how was how brave my late brother was, it, and who lost his life for his nation, for freedom. What is that website? Uh, how could we find it? Just White House website, I think. But it if the people Google it from Fox News and CNN by my names of my, my brother Manucher Mohammadi, they come from there. Could, could you please spell his name too? Yes, M-A-N-O-C-H-U-R, Manucher. Fantastic. Now, you are a very strong woman because people, men and women, fall apart for even less, much less than what you've endured. And now you are a SAG after actor. You face, once you, how did you find out about your brother's book? And then how long did it take for you to go about and, and complete writing it? Uh, I think the name of the book is called Ideas and Lashes. Is that correct? Yes, it is. It was, when he was alive, he gave me, he, when he was in the sick release, by support of an Amnesty International and many national and international places to send a letter, supportive letter, about my late brother when he was alive. Because he was very badly sick, because government tortured him a lot in the jail, in prison. And when he just became sick released and he went to, he had four surgery in the hospital, Castro Hospital in one, Tehran. And after that, he had, a, like a, he said, 30% of his prison diary he wrote it, and 70% after regime he changed over to, he's going to write it. And he, whenever I had, when I was, he called me by phone from my parents' house, I said, Nasreen, when a friend is going to email you about my story, Please publish it. When I read that his handwriting about prison diary was very painful and it was I was afraid. I tried to avoid to publish because I was very worried about his safety. And it took me to seven months. I tried to tell him, okay, I will publish. And he, he understood. I'm avoiding to publish. He understood. I don't want to publish his diary. And he told me, Nasreen, if you don't want to publish it, I'm going to, I have many friends in outside of country. I don't have any choice to ask them to publish. 
when I understood he's very serious about his diary to be published, I did not have any choice to publish it first to Farsi and then to English. But he was, he told me, Nasreen, his English is very important to me because I want to American people to read this book. I want to the people in the whole world to read this book, to know what's going on in Iran, what's going on, what happened to my life, what happened, what did the regime, Islamic regime of Islamic government of Iran did to him and to other people. And how brutal is this Islamic government of Iran? He asked me to publish it in English. I tried to publish this book in English, but it was too late. Before I published his book to Engl English, the regime took him from house to jail again after I published his book to Farsi. And even many doctors, they said he should not go back to jail, and he had many support from many national and international places from the whole world and he's very sick and he should not go back to jail but the regime took him to jail and avoid to give him any medicine and torture him after less than a month kill him under torture. I'm so very 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 sorry to hear that but uh, he is a great man he will not die in vain that is for sure. I try I never even I, when I escaped Iran, I said goodbye to Iran. That is not my country anymore. I said, I promised myself, no give up. And stand for innocent people in Iran and support them. Nothing going to stop me. I promised myself. Even I'm continuing education or something else, those to make me a stronger person, to be have a more strong voice than before, and to help people, to support people. But I, the, those, my education doesn't stop me to be voice of innocent people, to support people in Iran, and or to stop me to continue my late brother's path, or to forget people. Never, ever, I won't forget. I won't forget and forgive. Islamic government of Iran killed my late brother, killed my brother, took my parents to jail, my whole family, my brother, sister to jail, and now my parents as a hostage in Iran. I can't forgive and I can't forget it. It's very difficult for me. And I try to be voiced, never shut my mouth up.